appears to have targeted Rohingya Muslims with genocidal intent. Our government-supplied translator told this small group of journalists this was to be a total transparency tour. Nothing to hide, he said. The tour leader, Chi Tun, deputy director of Myanmar State TV, takes his orders from the Ministry of Information, which set our itinerary. We asked to visit specific Rohingya villages raised in the military blitzkrieg. We know that Tian Kali is on our way. It's on the road. It's on the coast road. It's important that we see these places. The man in green, Mr. Chaw, is military liaison. He was not keen to take us there. Tian Kali is not on the way. We have to go inside. So it will take time, but we will see because it is not in our schedule. Rohingya villagers had fled in terror when troops and their own Buddhist neighbors rampaged into Chenkali and then torched it. A year ago, we filmed a saffron inferno of blazing Rohingya villages. An orgy of burning rape, pillage and murder had been unleashed. The UN investigators repeatedly cited evidence that attacks were pre-planned coordinated by the security forces and executed by the military and ultranationalists with the blessing of radical Buddhist monks. This image shows the aftermath in Chenkali village. Monsoon rains and fresh growth had now cleansed the crime scene. The village was barely visible, but it was on our route. No, it looks like it. So we need to stop. stop. Yeah. Okay. Well, we forced the convoy to stop here, otherwise they wouldn't have. But this is the village of Chen Ka Li, or was. Because in late August 2017, 671 homes were burned to the ground right here. And all the people who lived here, Rohingya, fled. The government claimed then, and continues to claim to this day, that the Rohingya set fire to their own homes. Those who'd lived, farmed and fished here are now among more than a million Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh. Our tour guide wasn't happy we'd stopped. Uchiton, can you tell me what actually happened in this village? I don't know, he said. This was a Bengali village, he informed me. Burmese used Bengali as a derogatory term for Rohingya. The government brands them illegal immigrants. We carried on past Rakhine Buddhist villages, left untouched. The UN investigators said bulldozing and construction work was designed to remove every trace of Rohingya communities. Newly constructed villages had sprung up on appropriated land to accommodate non-Rohingya settlers. The village administrator of Indin shrugged off the ethnic cleansing. So you're happy they've gone? Yes, the terrorists left. We are happy. We showed him this picture of 10 Rohingya men murdered here. We asked to be taken to the mass grave. This is the photograph of the men before they were murdered. You do not, you do not know this place? It's not clear, he said, but we couldn't go there. Two Reuters journalists have been sentenced to seven years for investigating these murders. Seven soldiers were also jailed for the killings. We knew the men had been taken to the village school before they were killed. We showed Chosomu that picture too. Where's this, we asked? I suspected it might be at the school. Could we go there, we asked? So I think the photograph took place right here. Let's go and have a little look. So, so, oh, sorry, this is the place, because those, those toilets and that building, the men were right here. You're standing right now on the very spot that those men were forced to kneel before their execution. What do you feel about that? I have no particular feelings, he said. Well, <coughs> Chao Somu told us the terrorists had got what was coming. They'd started it, he said, by killing a Rakhine Buddhist farmer. North of Indian, Rohingya fishing boats lie abandoned. 
Next morning, we're up with the peacocks. Armed police line the roadsides now, apparently ready to repel Rohingya insurgent attacks. The last one, 11 months ago, in which five soldiers were injured. The government narrative is that their army clearance sweeps were legitimate counterinsurgency operations. They claim it all started when Rohingya rebels attacked 30 police posts simultaneously. We request another unauthorized stop. One of the worst massacres against the Rohingya took place at a village called Tulatoli or Minji, just up this road four miles. We're at the T junction here, and this standoff is about the fact that we've asked to go up there. Could you please check with the and they won't let us. Right now. A row had erupted, and we were given a string of excuses as to why it would not be possible. I showed them a satellite picture of Tulatoli from a year ago, which revealed 440 burned structures. Before and after pictures corroborated chilling accounts we had heard from survivors in Bangladesh. UN investigators believe at least 750 Rohingya men, women and children were killed in cold blood there. We believe we're the first journalists to try to go to this place and you are stopping us. And that's what we don't understand. Is it the schedule? Is it security? Or is it that you just don't want us to go? I'm not preventing you, Uchi Tun said. But there's a schedule from the Ministry of Information and the local police say they cannot provide security. Uh, he means there is no schedule, not in the arranged schedule. We were forced to head on up the road. We were behind schedule. This is what they were in such a hurry to show us. The Myanmar-Bangladesh border, a white line on an old British-built bridge, bang in the middle of no man's land. Nearby, a complex of prefabs, a reception center for returning refugees. Of the million-plus Rohingya now on the other side of the frontier, just 17 have returned voluntarily since April. But these rooms are about to get busy. Despite UN warnings of an ongoing genocide, Bangladesh is to start sending Rohingya refugees back, the first 2,200 planned for Thursday. The UN insists that it is not safe to do so and has called on both countries to abort the planned repatriations. Returnees will be housed here and in a transit camp while the government considers their applications. Until last year, four Rohingya villages stood where the transit camp had been built. The villages burned and then bulldozed. Those who do return, voluntarily or otherwise, are unlikely ever to be granted citizenship or freedom of movement. This is a makeshift camp of 5,000 Rohingya inside no man's land. Although they'd fled their villages, they're still technically in Myanmar, so they're not refugees. But armed police stand menacingly at the fence. The 5,000 are fed by the Red Cross from the Bangladesh side. Why can you not go into Bangladesh? No, no, we have no intention. We are not Bengali, we are not Bangladeshi. We are still waiting to go back, to come back our home. What would it take to persuade you to go home? The perpetrators must be taken to the trial, international trial, and then to restore our rights, our citizenship, like other community in Myanmar. Quite why the government of Myanmar thought it was a good idea to show journalists how they treated these people is hard to fathom. I asked our government-supplied translator if he felt any sympathy for them. No, he said. Well, earlier we spoke to the UN Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Myanmar. We asked Yang Yili what situation repatriated Rohingyas would find in Myanmar. They can expect pretty much the same things as far as I see it from where I sit right now. Uh, the laws that have been discriminating uh, for decades are still there. None of these laws or uh, policies or even directives, local directives, have been dismantled. And unless that has occurred, then we cannot say that they will go back to see a different uh, Rakhine or different Myanmar. They will not have any uh, pathway to citizenship as such. And as you have seen in the many uh, uh, st uh, st satellite photos that everything has been raised to the ground, 
new constructions. And so when our, our fellow uh, brothers and sisters in uh, Cox's Bazaar go back to their place of origin, they will not be able to recognize the place that they had left because it, there's new constructions built from where their land has been raised to the ground.